Hello friends. Until 2013, three gasoline units were present in the engine lineup. A 2 liter M4R, 140 horsepower, from Nissan. A 1.6 liter K4M, 110 horsepower, of Renault's own design. And a 1.4 liter H4J turbo engine, 131 horsepower. In 2013, a turbocharged 1.2 TCE, 116 horsepower, was offered. All gasoline engines, with the exception of 1.6 liters, are equipped with a durable chain type timing drive. The 16 valve 1.6 from the very beginning complied with the Euro 5 environmental standard. The timing drive here is a belt type with a recommended replacement interval of 60,000 kilometers. Its only weakness is the ignition coils. The Nissan M4R 2.0 is devoid of serious ailments, but there is one feature. When replacing spark plugs, follow the recommendations for a tightening torque of 20 Nm. There were cases when candles were pulled. This led to the appearance of cracks in the thread of the blockhead. Subsequently, antifreeze got into the candle wells or into the cylinders. The 1.4 TCE H4JT will please with its good dynamics. Many people think that this is a direct injection engine, but it is not. The 1.2 TCE H5FT, unlike the 1.4 TCE, received direct fuel injection, which reduced fuel consumption. Initially, it met Euro 5 emission standards. Since 2016, Euro 6, at the same time, power has increased to 132 horsepower. The Euro 6 version sometimes began to consume too much oil. However, the cases are still isolated. Moreover, after a long stay at temperatures around zero, there were difficulties with starting, and the engine vibrated strongly at idle during warm-up. In Western Europe, such phenomena were not observed, so Renault considered that it was all about low-quality fuel. The engine is powered by the 98th. The diesel line was represented by units with a volume of 1.5, 1.6, 1.9, and 2.0 liters. The 1.6 DCI R9M in 2011 was intended to replace the obsolete 1.9 DCI. The 2.0 DCI is arguably the most reliable diesel on the market. In the 1.6 DCI and 2.0 DCI, a chain is used to actuate the timing, and in the rest of the units, a toothed belt. The most widespread was the 1.5 DCI, which existed in several versions, differing in power. 86 horsepower, 95 horsepower, 106 horsepower, and 110 horsepower. The 86 horsepower unit K9K830 complies with the Euro 4 standard and therefore does not have a particulate filter. The same goes for the 1.5 DCI with 106 horsepower K9K832. The remaining modifications comply with Euro 5 standards. In 2015, they were redesigned into Euro 6. Euro 5 and Euro 6 turbo diesels are equipped with a particulate filter. For its regeneration, the fifth nozzle is used, which is installed in the exhaust system. This eliminates the risk of diesel fuel getting into the oil during DPF regeneration. The filter itself serves more than 200 to 250,000 kilometers. However, a little earlier, the pipe of the exhaust pressure sensor may burn out. The pressure sensor fails less often. In addition, the exhaust damper can be moping. It is installed in the exhaust system and is part of the EGR system. If the electronic part is normal, then you can try to develop the damper. The Euro 5 version and the 106 horsepower Euro 4 received continental piezoelectric injectors. Only the 86 horsepower 1.5 DCI uses the infamous Delphi system. Euro 6 units are equipped with a Bosch fuel system. The 1.5 DCI engine has become famous for premature wear of the connecting rod bearings, which can lead to fatal consequences. The problem is that there are no warning signs. Therefore, mechanics recommend preventive replacement of liners after 150,000 kilometers. However, there are many examples when the original liners went without consequences until the next replacement of 300 to 400,000 kilometers. After 200 to 250,000 kilometers, sometimes you have to change the turbine and nozzles. And for the K9K636, 110 horsepower, tripling at idle is typical at air temperatures below zero degrees. 
The problem is solved by installing an additional resistor in the fuel temperature sensor circuit. The 1.6 DCI is still young and not widely used, so there is too little information about it. In the secondary market, it is almost impossible to find Scenics with 1.9 DCIs and 2.0 DCI motors. The 1.9 DCI, like the 1.5 DCI, the same often suffers from premature wear of the connecting rod bearings. In the 2.0 DCI, this affliction is rare. A 1.6 liter petrol aspirated and 1.4 TCE are paired with a 6 speed TL4 mechanic. The 2 liter petrol unit was matched exclusively with the FK0, none other than the Jatco JF011E CVT. The 1.5 liter diesel was aggregated with the TL4 manual transmission and the 106 horsepower alternatively with the EDC robot designated as DC4. The 1.9 DCI was paired with ND4 mechanics and the 2.0 DCI was paired with PK4. The 150 horsepower 2.0 DCI was offered in conjunction with the Jatco AJ0 6 speed automatic. The mechanical box is reliable and hardy. The manual transmission clutch serves more than 150 to 200,000 kilometers. The robot is based on TL4 but received two clutches. Unlike the German DSG, which uses a hydraulic clutch drive, the French robot has an electric drive. Claims to EDC arise closer to 150 to 200,000 kilometers. In recent years, the control unit has been finalized, but there are still few statistics on the results of modernization. The clutch of the robot as a rule has to be updated at a distance of 200 to 250,000 kilometers. In addition, every 50,000 kilometers, it is recommended to carry out adaptation, compensation for wear of the clutch discs. In some cases, the bearings of the differential wear out or the clutch electric drive fails. On a Scenic with a CVT, sometimes the hose of the box oil cooling system breaks off or it bursts, frays, and leaks. The variator itself has a number of weak points, the high pressure pump valve and solenoids. After 200,000 kilometers, consumables become unusable, a belt, a step motor, and shaft bearings. Oil should be changed every 50 to 60,000 kilometers. The AJ0 automatic machine, traditionally for Jatco, is designed with a power reserve and is therefore reliable and durable. If you neglect regular oil updates after 50 to 60,000 kilometers, then the rings, bushing seals, torque converter clutch friction, and solenoids wear out first. Usually the first repair is not complicated and happens at very high mileage. The suspension is omnivorous and has a high level of comfort. Classic McPherson struts are installed at the front and a semi-independent beam at the rear. Running gear lasts a long time. Silent blocks and ball bearings of the front levers are handed over after 100 to 150,000 kilometers, and front shock absorbers after 150 to 200,000 kilometers. Soon, the silent blocks of the rear beam are also suitable. After 100 to 150,000 kilometers, the front wheel bearings may require replacement. The Scenic has an electromechanical parking brake. There are no usual cables here, and each rear wheel is equipped with its own servo motor. Parking brake malfunctions occur due to corrosion of the contacts or damage to the wiring. In steering, the electric booster is applied. Fortunately, there are no systematic problems with it. The corrosion of the Renault Scenic 3's body has not yet been discussed. An interesting point. The VIN number is stamped on the body pillar on the side of the front passenger door, between the door hinges. Not all owners and inspectors know about its whereabouts, so when registering a car, sometimes unpleasant incidents arise. With age, the doorstop rollers wear out. Sometimes the plastic glass holders in the lifting mechanism of the side windows are destroyed. There are also problems with door locks. They do not open and close the first time. Most often this happens with the driver's lock. The reason is a sour motor. As a rule, it can be revived after cleaning. 
However, the motor can be replaced separately by choosing an inexpensive analog in a well-known Chinese online store. The base Scenic Phase 1, authentic trim, used a monochrome display. Over time, it stopped turning on. It's all about the printed circuit board. Replacing the display with a new one costs a lot of money. Experienced auto electricians have learned to fix the problem by re-soldering the board. In other versions of the microvan, a TFT display is installed, which is also a no-no and will charge or go out. Cabin cooling problems can arise for several reasons. One of them is a faulty compressor pulley, wedge, backlash. Sometimes the compressor itself surrenders. There are also leaks through the air conditioner radiator or the lower aluminum tube in the area of the right side member. The heater fan also has to be restored. The brushes wear out or the resistor fails. With some skill, it can be replaced without disassembling the front panel. With long runs, the generator may also become ill. The brushes wear out, the diode bridge or voltage regulator fails. The starter could also go bad. But more often than not, it all ends with cleaning the Bendix. If you know of other model malfunctions, be sure to write about it.